I'm obviously a bit of an N64 fanboy, but I must admit, as some of you know I was also a PlayStation owner. Whilst I loved the Nintendo 64's more cute kart racers, I always had a dark side of me which loved the more sinister look and feel of the Twisted Metal series. Surprisingly for many, the Twisted Metal Studio was announced as an N64 developer way back at the start of the console's life, but Single Track never did take the plunge and release anything on the console. That left a huge hole in the N64 library. Sure, we had some of the best racers with weapons like Mario Kart and Snowball Kids, but if you wanted something more adult then Activision popped up in 1998 to fill that void with Vigilante 8. For reasons I guess you or I will never know, Vigilante 8 was released worldwide on PlayStation and Nintendo 64 in early 1998, but it wasn't until a year later the European version arrived on N64. My guess would be that perhaps a deal with Sony was struck for a European exclusive period for the game. But whatever the truth may be, Vigilante 8 is actually a semi-sequel to a PC game called Interstate 76, and it may surprise you to know that it was developed by a team of just 5 staff members. Like Interstate 76, Vigilante 8 is set against the backdrop of an American wasteland and features a more adult orientated take on vehicle combat. The aim of the game here is not to win races, but it's to destroy and survive against an arena style deathmatch. Vigilante 8 offers a nice selection of around 12 or so insane vehicles to choose from and they all have their own strengths and weaknesses and not to mention wacky drivers. You'll need to experiment during the game as to which vehicle suits your playstyle, but in a nice touch each character has their own end story and so it helps to build up a little more personality into the game. Unfortunately the PlayStation's cutscenes are replaced here with the typical still images of the 70s style artwork but it does look really nice even if it is a little bit disappointing in comparison to the PlayStation game. The most amount of your single player time will be spent in the quest mode where you take your character on missions across the western areas of North America as you do battle with a range of objectives. In a nice touch and definitely adding some longevity to the game is that missions will vary slightly between which character you choose so sometimes you may get certain targets to destroy, whereas other times you may be defending an area. With the vehicles all being so different, it definitely makes you want to try and complete the quest mode with as many of them as possible, and it feels like a unique experience each time you play. As you make your way through the quest, you'll unlock additional drivers and vehicles, and even a special stage designed exclusively for the Nintendo 64 version. The mechanics of the game are very loose, and some of the collision detection can be a little off at times, it is a game that takes its action seriously, but itself not so much. Through the many stages there are areas to explore, buildings to hide in, and as most of the environment is destructible, a whole lot of explosions to be seen. The stages themselves are quite honestly awesome. Yes there are some which are not quite perfect, but as a whole most of the maps I feel are large enough and unique enough with plenty of areas to learn. They all have the same post-apocalyptic look and feel, and how they are best tackled is really down to your playstyle. In contrast, the N64 exclusive level Dreamland 64 is a tongue-in-cheek take on the world of Nintendo, complete with the princess castle, overly bright colours and some super soft textures. It's not a particularly great level by any means, but it's certainly funny to see in the game no less. Importantly, the game makes full use of the expansion pack, which lets you bump the game into high res mode which makes everything look more detailed. There isn't much fogging at all in the game, and this is due to the way the game was developed as textures and objects in the distance are faded in and out, and only brought back into focus and detail when you get near to them. One downside of the expansion pack support is that the frame rate does suffer a little. In medium res mode the game moves along quite steadily, but when you turn the dial to 11 and go into high res mode you'll quickly notice the game stutters on occasions, and especially when there are multiple explosions on screen the frame rate skipping is noticeable. I also love how the vehicles show real time damage. It sounds something minor but when you're near death and your car looks like it's just been through hell, it really adds to the atmosphere of the game, and just by looking at your car you will know that you're in trouble. In terms of audio, the game's CD quality soundtrack has been taken out and a whole new set of MIDI tracks has been added for the N64 version. It's hard to say which version I prefer, but the N64 version does sound good and perhaps being 70s inspired and a little more muffled, the soundtrack works better. It's by no means perfect as some of the explosions and weapon noises do get lost in the mix, but nothing stopping you from popping in your headphones and listening to some metal instead. 
Now where the game really stands out is in the multiplayer mode, whereas the PlayStation version was limited, the N64 version seemed like it was almost made for the console. With support for up to 4 players and the expansion pack helping things to run smoothly, Vigilante 8 is a dream to play and it may well be the perfect game to play in between bouts of Mario Kart. There are also a host of new deathmatch modes not found in the PlayStation game and my personal favourite mode was co-op battles and nothing can be as fun as tag teaming with a friend and ganging up on another player. It adds a sense of tactics to the matches and it's bound to cause some arguments and I also really love being able to play the entire quest mode in co-op format too. Well Vigilante 8 may not have been everybody's cup of tea, but for what it does, I think it does rather well. It has so much single player content that for the price it goes for now it's hard to turn down, and in multiplayer you really can't put a price on the fun you should get out of this one. If you've longed for a twisted metal game on the N64, then this was as close as we'd ever get. Aside from losing the cutscenes from the PlayStation version, the game actually improves on it in almost every other area. So for today's debate in the comment section down below, let me know which version you think is the best. And also let me know your favourite vehicle combat game of the time and your reasons why. As always, thank you for watching and until next time.